I've made a digital asset using Houdini to procedurally add damage to objects in Unreal Engine 5. You can download it from the link in the description. Let's go over how it works. In order to use it, you should first install the Houdini Engine plugins. Make sure to install the free Houdini Engine Indie or the free versions that are available for Unreal and Unity. I'll put the link to both of them in the description below. After installing the Houdini Engine plugin, you will see the Houdini Engine menu up here. Click on it and select Create Session. Houdini Engine Session is connected. So now let's drag the damage tool in the level. I'm gonna use a basic shape to go over what we can do with it. So let's add the cube and browse it in the content browser. Select the damage tool, scroll down. Here we can add the mesh we want to add the damage to. So let's drag the cube here and wait for it to process it. Okay, let's bring it up. As you can see, it's already added some damage to the mesh. So let's go over the parameters. The first one is damage points or edges. The default value is 1. We can set it to either 0 or 1. 0 means that the damage is added to the points or vertices and 1 means that the damage is added to the edges. By default, it's 1, so the damage is added to the edges. If I set it to 0, and wait for it to process it. Now if I change the parameters below, the damage will be added to the vertices in the corners of the mesh. For example, if I set the damage bevel radius to something like 15, we can see it better. And if I increase the damage amount to 100, again we can see that the damage is added mostly to the corners of the mesh. If this value is 0, the damage will be limited and if it's 1, it's unlimited. If the damage is limited, it's limited to the corners or edges of the mesh. But if it's unlimited, it can happen all over the surface of the mesh. For example, right now it's 0, so the damage is limited. But if I set it to 1 and wait for it to process it, now we can see that damage is added all over the mesh. By default, the edges between the damaged parts and the undamaged parts are kind of smooth. But if we set the create hard edges option to 1, the edges will no longer be smooth. Minage angle controls the minimum an angle should be so the damage affects it. For example, right now by default the minage angle is 75 degrees. So the damage will be added to all the edges that are more than 75 degrees. On this cube, all the edges are 90 degrees. So for example, if I set the minage angle to 91 degrees and wait, we can see that now none of the edges are damaged. But if I set it to 89 degrees, now we can see that all the edges are damaged. Damage bevel radius controls the damage radius. If I increase it to something like 15, this is how it looks and if I decrease it to something like 2, this is how it looks. Let's say it to 10 and wait. The lower the damage amount, the less damage we see on the mesh. For example, if I set it to 60, this is how it looks. Let's set it back to 100. Damage convexity is a value between minus 1 and 1. If I set it to minus 1, this is how it looks. If I set it to 0, this is how it looks. And if I set it to 1, this is how it looks. So set it depending on the way you want your mesh to look. Noise is what makes the damage more realistic. For example, if the noise amplitude is 0, this is how it looks. It doesn't look good. So depending on the mesh, the size of the mesh, and the material, we should change the noise amplitude and the noise size parameters. For most of the time, an amplitude of 10 and the noise size of 10 are good, but you can play with them and tweak them to see what the result will look like.
The last parameter controls the percentage of the triangles of the mesh we want to keep. In order to add damage to the mesh, we need to remesh it. If I set the view mode to wireframe, we can see that it is a high poly mesh. Now in order to reduce that and make it more optimized, we can select what percentage of the triangles we want to keep. By default, it is set to 100, so all the triangles are there. But we can reduce it to something like 10, and this is the result. As you can see, only 10% of the triangles are there. If you want to use Nanite, I recommend keeping at least 60% of the triangles. But in other cases, you can reduce it as much as you want. Just keep in mind that if you set it to a low value like I've done here, you may see some issues with the normals. So let's say that now I'm happy with the result. These are the parameters I'm using. But this is a still a digital asset. I want to bake it into a mesh so I can use it in my level. For that, I scroll up and here click on bake. And now the mesh is created. and we can browse it in the content browser. Now we can either delete the HDA or change the parameters and create another variation of the mesh. We can't just assign any material to the mesh. For example, if I assign this quicksell material to the mesh, it doesn't look good in the damaged areas. That's why I've created a material specifically for this tool. So let's browse it. Right click on it and create a material instance. Assign it to the mesh and open it. I've basically edited the Quixel master material and added some parameters for the damage area. Let's first add the textures for the base material. I want to use these concrete textures. For the damage area, I'll use the same textures. We can add a detailed normal texture to this part. I'll use the same normal texture as it has a lot of details on it. So now we can change the base color tint of the damage area to something darker. That's better. This parameter controls the size of the texture. One is fine. And this parameter controls the size of the detail texture. If I set it to something like 2 and increase the normal strength to something like 1.5 or 2, we can see it better. We also have all these other parameters to control the material. They're basic quick cell parameters so you can go over them yourself. We can spend some time and create different variations of the same mesh as I've done with these simple meshes. Again you can download this tool from my Patreon. The link is in the description. So thank you so much for watching. Like this video, subscribe and join our communities linked in the description. See you in the next video.